Hey, welcome everyone. This is Trey Jadlow here. I'm here on this uh, 15th day of February 2023. Time is flying. And I'm um, here with my new friend here, Chuck, who I think he has a podcast called Talking Whatever Wednesday. And we've had a, um, uh, an exchange on Twitter. I think it had does something to do with aliens or messages from outer space, I think. And um, I asked him if he would be willing to have a conversation to discuss the existence of God. And he said, which God? And I said, the God of Christianity. And he said, yes, he would be willing to do that. So thank you very much, Chuck. Welcome. And I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay. So um, what? Um, where should we start on? Well, actually, before we begin, usually I like to get a little bit of information. <clears throat> um, are, would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself? You don't have to be anything too detailed, but I'm kind of curious as to where people are with religion, like if they're an atheist, a hard atheist or whatever, and maybe what their uh, maybe background is related to religion and maybe wherever you live. And I'll tell you about myself as well. Uh, sure. Well, I'm an atheist. I um, was raised in a pseudo kind of Christian family. Uh, it was never really pushed on us, but it was always just kind of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, birds. Um, but yeah, I don't believe in any gods existing. Uh, the Christian God, you know, any gods proposed really. Uh, I think uh, religion is really just, it's made up by people, you know? Okay. Um, now, what kind of, if you mind tell me what denomination your family was, your parents were when you grew up? It was never really, we never went to church. It was never really a thing. Oh. Oh, okay, so it's just kind of a, kind of a. It was just kind of understood we were Christian. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. It was okay. This God, cool. Right. Anything else? You know, like that was it. No, that's fine. Um, okay. No, well, I mean, I mean, from, I mean, from family, it was just like, oh, okay, we accept this. Do we really? You know, but that was it. Okay, so there was no like significant content. So if you had a question about something, there really were no answers to be given, right? Uh, not really, no. No, no. Okay. All right. Well, great. All right. Well, let me tell you about myself. myself. Um, I'm, uh, I live in the Kansas City area. I'm uh, 56. Um, I'm a dental lab technician. This is my office here. Uh, I make a crown and break work for dentists. And uh, I've been a Christian 35 years, I think. I was 20. Uh, be this fall, I'll be 36 years. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist. Um, and, um, I enjoy engaging with ideas. I like talking to people who have ideas different than mine. It's a wonderful way to broaden your horizons and learn about, uh, other perspectives. And I very much enjoy that. It's one of the things I love about the internet. You can connect with people in other countries and with a lot of different ideas. And I enjoy uh, engaging my ideas in a marketplace of ideas and to test them to see if they're real. And if I need to change, I can change. So, um, Anyway, with that, I guess we can go ahead and get started, unless you had a question for me or something. Uh, no, uh, go ahead. All right, so <clears throat> the, the, the beginning premise is going to be then, I guess, with our discussion is the uh, existence of God, not as an act of pure blind faith, but as demonstrable fact. Would that be a fair thing to stay, say? Um, yeah, that'd be really hard for... Uh you to jump into though i mean how do you demonstrate that okay well i've been doing this over a decade and i've not had a serious uh, uh not only i've never lost the argument and i'm not talking about me I'm in the argument itself i never had a serious challenge so maybe you're you're the guy um okay so before, before we begin our inquiry um we need i need a, i need a couple presuppositions from you i'm not a presuppositional so i don't know if you're familiar with that i'm a i'm a classicist i don't know if you know about apologetics but uh Presuppositionalism. Have you heard of presuppositionalism? Um, no. Okay, then we're not going to. You mean presuppositionalist? Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not that. Okay. Just, just let you okay. know. Okay. Not that. But, so when I'm asking for presuppositions, these are just instruments that we need in order to do inquiry. I've never had anybody. It's not. It's not a presuppositional approach at all. It's. It's. Uh, I've never had anybody actually not grant these to me, but. Would you say that in order to uh, begin our, our 
foray into inquiring whether God exists that we first must have um, the law of non-contradiction or, or rational coherence. We got to follow the laws of thought. I'm sure that A equals A, that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and law of non-contradiction, law of identity, and law of excluded middle. All right. So um, then secondly, I need to have um, uh, the basic reliability of sense perception because that's the only connection we have to this world. I'm not saying it's infallible. We all know that we make mistakes all the time. That's why science is changing. But that can we have at least a basic reliability of our sense perception to give us information about the outside world? To an extent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if, if you want to say no, then we can't have science <laughs> at all. Um, and and um, so. I mean, uh, you can't, like, if you were cutting a board, you'd be better off using a measuring tape than just eyeballing it. So, yeah, your perception, your senses aren't entirely reliable. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but that wouldn't be a very good example. I mean, that's just saying you should be more precise. Like, you could say, like, um, um, I, I, the fact that I do need that I that I know that when I look at the measuring tape and I measure the board, that I know that that somehow corresponds to reality, so that when I cut it, it'll actually work. I have a general reliability of that, right? That the measuring measuring stick is measuring tape is reliable. Yeah, and, and what I'm perceiving with my senses actually corresponds to reality in some basic sense. Sure. Because yeah, I mean, every, every, yeah, it's 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 a trivially true thing, and nobody nobody does that. But th this is what I've got to have though uh, as I begin the inquiry here. All right. So, with that said, if I'm going to make a statement here, if something exists, and I'm going to say you, the inquirer, uh, there are only four possibilities. And the first possibility is that everything that exists is an illusion. That's a possible, that's a possibility for everything that we experience now. And we're seeing it's not real. All right. And then the second, and we'll go, I'll go through one of these, each one of them and, and demonstrate which ones are valid or not. The second possibility, and I, and I haven't had anybody know any more this, than these four. There's four possibilities. Um, and some people want to say, oh, no, there's another one. They'll say it. And I'll say, no, that's that's number two or that's number three or whatever. All right. So uh, everything is illusion is the first possibility. The second possibility is that everything that exists is self-created. It made itself. Okay. And the third possibility is that which exists is self-existent. And then finally, the last uh option is that which exists is created by something that is self-existent okay now uh the first the first option is that which exists is an illusion now are you familiar with rene descartes no okay he was a 17th century philosopher mathematician uh he's considered a rationalist rather than empiricist and he um was the kind of guy that um these headphones are bothering me. I, mean, I don't usually use these, and I can hear myself too much. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, anyway, I got used to them. Um, so Rene Descartes was a, a, a rationalist philosopher, and he basically, this is, uh, are you familiar with the Reformation? Somewhat. I haven't really studied it. Okay, so, so the Reformation was something that happened in the 16th century, and there was this big split between Protestantism and Catholicism, <clears throat> you know? And sure. so the authority, the authority of the church was brought into question at this time. And it's also at the same, in a similar time as this, we kind of had a, uh, a scientific revolution um, with early modern physics and stuff coming about. And um, what these did is they, they brought the world into a new era, if you will, of uncertainty. You know, used to be if you had a question about anything, you go to the church and the church could give you an authoritative state. Now the church is all scattered into all these different pieces and you don't know. Um, and also with science, uh, well, actually I, I said early modern physics, that's actually a little bit later. Actually, I've, I should say the, the Copernican revolution, are you familiar with Copernicus and, uh, Galileo, Galileo's just, uh, minimally yeah. is heliocentrism versus geocentrism. All right. So everybody believed up to this time that the earth is the center of the solar system or the center of the universe. And uh, Copernicus came up with a new model that basically showed that the sun is actually the center of the solar system. And this is very controversial. And um, because of this, again, uh, certainty was kind of put on on 
alert there. And it's like, well, how do we know anything? You know, the church, we don't know what the church is. We don't know what science is for sure. We're not. In. And so Descartes comes into this kind of vacuum and basically says, I want to find out what it is that I cannot deny everything. I, I want to doubt everything that I can possibly doubt. And uh, he said, I'm going to doubt that all of this existence that I'm seeing is fake and see if I can justify it. And uh, he found that he could doubt everything except for one thing. The one thing that he could not escape is the fact that he was doubting. And he says, if I doubt that I exist, then I would have to be, I'd have to doubt that I'm doubting. And the only way that you can doubt that you're doubting is through thinking. And if you're thinking and you're doubting, then there must be a thinker. And so he came up with this uh, maxim that said, cogito ergo sum. Yeah, I think, I think before I am. Right. Yeah. And so what he did is he said, um, uh, the one thing that I cannot doubt is that there's a doubter. And he said, it's possible that everything around us, everything that we see and I experience, you sitting here right now could possibly be an illusion. But I cannot doubt uh, that I'm thinking about it. And so the one thing that we know that must exist is the, that there is a thinker or that there is somebody who's doubting or somebody who's asking a question. I have atheists sometimes will say that. They'll say okay. it's so an illusion. Like, like the new version of that could be the Matrix. How do you? How would you know you're not in the Matrix? That sort of thing. Yes, but but the thing you can't escape is there's the you still. Right, right, right. In other right. words, everything could be a. I could be a brain in a vat. But one thing I can't doubt is the yeah. brain. Because <laughs> all you know is that you question. exist, and you can't really go go out from there. Yeah, right. I've, I've heard that before. All right, so so that disproves the first option that everything that exists is an illusion, because uh, there's I myself exist, and. Uh, um, if I exist, then uh, it's not an illusion. All right. Now the second or the second option is uh, that which exists is self-created, and to be self-created means for something to again. I, this is why I asked for the law of non-contradiction. It would violate the law of non-contradictions. In order for something to create itself, it would have to be before it is or before it was. So uh, something cannot make itself because it doesn't exist in order to create itself. So uh, it would have to be and not be at the same time, the same relationship as law of non contradiction. So we know that whatever exists, that I, the inquirer, I could not have made myself because I did not exist at one time. And I would have to, it would have to, if, once you deny the law of non contradiction, Aristotle had this principle called the principle of explosion. It means all inquiry explodes because if you say the law of non contradiction doesn't hold, it also means that it does hold when you say that statement because nothing makes any sense because if if something can be and not be at the same time in the same relationship any assertion you made makes no sense it becomes incoherent so something cannot make itself before it exists so therefore the second option is not a possibility all right the third option is that which exists is self existent and uh uh that which is self-existent is that which has being within itself. It's not dependent on anything else for its being. But we know that since we were born, since we are changing, anything that changes is dependent upon something outside of itself to affect it to this new state of being. For example, I, I'm, I'm going bald. Okay, so I'm, I was potentially bald when I was younger, but now I'm becoming actually bald. And uh, there are several factors within that, some of them within. Just me, shave it, I'm, man. Just right. shave it. Just go all the way. Just shave it. <laughs> that's what my that's what my sister says. She said you need to shave it. <laughs> but but the thing is is um, uh, the the I I am moving from uh, a potential state of something to an actual state of something, and anything that moves from from uh, a state of actuality to a new state of actuality, it has to go through this thing called Aristotelian philosophy. It says it has to go through potentially being something else. I am potentially bald now. I am time by time becoming more actually bald as time progresses. Um, but in order for something to uh, be moved to a new state of existence, it must be acted upon something else outside of itself that, that brings it to this new state of being that it's in. And that thing that acts upon it must itself be actual. So it can't be potential itself because to be pure potentiality is to be nothing. Like I am potentially dead or I am potentially shorter than I was when I was younger, you know, I'm shrinking or whatever. So, um, so I know that since I am changing, I cannot be self-existent. 
I know that if I don't have oxygen, I will die. I'm dependent upon oxygen in order to maintain my existence or water or food or anything like that. So anything that is self-existent doesn't change. It cannot be affected by something outside of itself because once it is affected by something itself, it becomes non-self-existent or the philosophical term is contingent. It becomes you know, dependent or contingent uh, being. It doesn't become that, it just is. It becomes an effect. So that which is pure, purely self-existent is pure actuality. It does not, uh, it, is an, it is a cause without an effect because anything that is an effect is something that was changed into being to what it is now. So I know that I was born. I know that I'm changing. I know that I'm dependent in my being. I'm contingent in my being. Therefore, I'm not self-existent. And so then it leaves us with the last option, which says that which exists is created by something that is self-existent. And uh, the, the, one of the examples is that if, if something, if, if this pen exists, then it necessarily follows that God exists because this pen is dependent. I can break it. I can, I can act upon it. I can move it. And this pen could not have created itself before it existed. And uh, so if any, if something exists then something must exist eternally because re reality can't create itself before it is. So, and that, that self-existent being would be God. Do you have a rebuttal? Hmm. Um, what was that second part again? Uh, that which exists. I'm taking notes and I forgot. That's fine. No, that's fine. Uh, that which exists is self-created. But in order to create itself, it would have to be before it exists. It's a violation of law, not contradiction. Okay. Hmm. Like I said, I'm not even, not only has this argument ever failed, I've never had a serious challenge. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. Okay, back to the uh, illusion part. So, uh, what if our minds are actually AI, completely cr com uh, created by computers, not human at all? Okay, so you're. you're then you're does our mind exist? Okay, so then you're just moving it back a step. Then the computers, you're saying, do exist. I'm saying, what if? No, I, that's that's a valid question. What if? But I'm saying, if if you if we are a simulation, we're not really doing the questioning. Then you're still asserting something back of us that exists. And if you want to say the computers are the ultimate reality that is unchanging and self-existent, then you've conceded the argument. Well, how would we know what's even ultimate then, or even exists, if we are ourselves are AI? Um, well, we have the capacity to think about these things. That's what we're doing right now. Do we? And, and well, if, if, if we're just say, a, a computer program, how could we think beyond that? Okay. Well, what reason do you have to believe that we are a computer program? And we're just not throwing out a what if. Okay. But I'm just saying you've got to, you've got to live with the justification for the question that you're making. In other words, um, reality does not exist. You're, you're still positing some reality. You're saying we are not what we think that we are, but you are conceding that something exists. Is that, would that be a correct statement? Uh, that there is existence, but how would we know if we're just AI? Who's asking is, the it, is our Is our mind in an illusion? Is everything an illusion? Who's asking? Me. Okay, then you exist. Right, but uh, I'm asking this, what if? What if okay. we are just and AI? I'm, how would I'm, we know? I'm, I'm saying how we would know that something, the whole argument is that something exists. And you're conceding that. No, I'm saying how would we know if we were just AI? But that's, that, it's really irrelevant to the question. How is it not? How is it irrelevant? Because if something exists, then something exists necessarily. You're saying that 
there's something that that gives us our being. Is that what you're saying? In other Do words, we exist? Does something exist if it's just AI? What is the AI? A computer program. Okay. So yes, you're you're answering your own question. Okay. I mean, all you're doing is just moving it back a step, but it doesn't really cause it cause a problem. Okay. So yeah, I don't do this all the time. So, I mean, it seems like you do. Well, I mean, I've had the conversation many, 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 many times. I can't, I can't find a hard enough. Literally, it takes me months, and I invite almost every day to find an atheist who actually have a conversation anymore. <laughs> they won't do it. It's kind of exasperating. Yeah. I mean, it's like me finding a uh, a flat earther who will actually have a conversation. <laughs> I'll probably agree to that. That's pretty crazy. Show me your evidence. What? Where? <laughs> None? I agree. Yeah. The crickets, they get louder and louder. Well, you don't get some that are, you don't get some that are, I mean, you can't find people that want to argue it? I do, but it, they don't produce evidence. So what are um, they, I mean, do they, do they, they, they they don't they'll regurgitate this. They regurgitate the same things that have been refuted a thousand times, as if they haven't been. Okay. And pseudoscience, I, and yeah, nothing. I I like I I find that topic to be so incredibly uninteresting. I really know nothing about it. I find it interesting because it's demonstrably false. Sure. Yeah. That's why I you don't, know I don't even. It's physically something we can prove, you know? I mean, this... Unless we're an AI, I, I, right? <laughs> Yeah, unless we're an AI. I mean, I enjoy a good conversation, you know? If, if both sides are ready to have that and present an argument, sure. but when one side is just... Um, just intellectually dishonest from the beginning, there's really no point, and it just lax you know right yeah it's so fun really it's always nice like i enjoy fun. the conversation of does god exist i can have that all day sure yeah yeah flat earth is uh is kind of a non-starter <laughs> but if you really if you want to get a kick out of some of those i'd check out um mc tune or uh ftfp fight the flat earth those guys those two guys have some interesting conversations with those people right and it's really the same conversation every time. And the well, flat the earthers thing. don't, you know, I mean, it's not even realize it, that. It, it, yeah. That's kind of how I feel with uh, my presuppositional friends. I don't think it's a, a worthy uh, presuppositionalist. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, to me, it's kind of the same thing. Um, not very thoughtful. Um, but anyway, okay. So, um, so I guess there's something to think about. Um, and then, uh, the other argument I like to argue is, um, for, uh, moral law, that there is a right and a wrong, that there is, uh, a way by which we should live. Okay. Um, so and, that's actually uh, interesting. Okay. Do you, do you think that there is a moral law that is other than conventional for what humans get together and agree upon? Uh, I think morality is subjective. It changes time to time, depending on the people involved. Um, what we consider immoral now wasn't 10 years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm not, like, me as a teenager, I would throw out the F word uh, in regards to gay people. Me 40, I'm like, Jesus, I was such an asshole. That's not cool. So as we grow and, you know, understand things more, our morality changes. And we have a, hopefully a better understanding of other people and where everyone is. You know what I mean? Okay, so would you agree that I, I, I don't believe that different cultures have different moral codes very much at all. I think that every single culture presupposes one particular truth and that guides all of their other decisions that they make. And some people are better at discerning the goal than others. 
And that goal does shift over time. I'm not goal. The way that they get to that goal may shift at times and it may be better sometimes and it may be worse at other times. But the, the one thing that every moral code presupposes at the beginning is the sanctity of existence. In other words, that existence is somehow holy or special. That's what every moral code presupposes as a starting point. So the sanctity of life is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I would, but I, I, I like to say sanctity of existence because um, even people would say non-living matter we are stewards of. We should take care of it like, um, you know, the way that we arrange and take care of rocks or something. You know, it's good to use the rocks to say, for example, build houses or bridges somehow that can sanctify the existence of this world in which we live. Uh, and, and as humans, we are generally focused on sanctifying the existence of humanity. And when I say that, I don't mean just living, but I'm talking about the fullness of life, joy. We are seeking uh, uh, uh the, the absence of pain and the pursuit of pleasure or satisfaction um, in our existence. And uh, I don't think I've ever had anybody that could uh, repeat some people. Like, for example, uh, Adolf Hitler. If you say that. <laughs> Going right to Hitler. OK. Well, I like to use it's called reductio ad absurdum. You use, you, you use the most extreme example you can think of to make the point. You, you assume your opponent's perspective to make your point. And so uh, Adolf Hitler, um, some people want to say, have you heard of conventionalism? Um, it's a moral uh, no. framework where it basically says that, basically what you were saying, we, we kind of uh, all decide together what is the right thing. And it's whatever the consensus is, is what is right, determines right and wrong. The problem with that is, is the only person who becomes, if you will, a sinner is somebody who disagrees with the herd, whatever the herd says. And, but we all know that that's not true because we don't say that Adolf Hitler, because the let's say there's a majority of, um, of uh, Nazis that um, believe that what they were doing was correct. Because they all believe that themselves, does that therefore make it correct? And in my opinion, no. Okay. And that's how it's subjective. Okay, so then... If somebody disagrees with you, are they wrong? Uh, in, in my opinion, yeah. Okay, but does your opinion mean anything? Uh, to no one else but me, really, in the long so, run. So for you then, right and wrong is just the law of the jungle. Whoever has the most power is the one who is right. No. Oh, so there is a standard that you feel like we all should supply, our, we all should submit ourselves to. Yeah, mine. And, and so everybody needs to do what you do. Say, for example, if you don't like broccoli, but you like ice cream, should broccoli be outlawed? No, if, uh, if I don't like broccoli, I'm not going to make you eat broccoli. Okay, so you don't think you have a right to stop somebody else or to force someone else not to eat broccoli. Right. Okay, do you have a if, right? If to... I don't like broccoli and you like broccoli... That's fine. Enjoy your broccoli. Okay. What if I like to murder people? Now we have a now we have a situation because that's a bigger issue. You're, yeah, it's the sanctity of existence. Whether somebody likes broccoli or not has is what we call adi opera is the, the Latin term. I think. Um, might be a Greek term. Um, but anyway, it's uh, yeah, I think it's a Greek term. Uh, just means it's things indifferent. You know, whether you like football, whether you like broccoli, you know, doesn't matter. But if somebody's an axe murderer, that is attacking the sanctity of existence because humans Again, you're are intrinsic. But you're comparing the sanctity of existence to enjoying broccoli. And those are two different no, things actually, entirely. I'm, no, actually, I'm distinguishing them. That's what that's my whole point. I'm saying whether you like broccoli or not is is it's a thing indifferent. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. But if you are killing somebody, you are attacking the sanctity of existence. So, for example, broccoli, broccoli promotes life. <laughs> and you may not like it, but it's not a it's not something that's destructive to society. So the reason that you dislike murder is because something instinctively in you, you know that existence is special. But this is something you can't justify with your atheism. How's that? Is it true that 
existence is objectively valuable? Well, I'm asking you, how is that? How is that? How is, how, prove that statement. How is How can I not prove that with uh, in, in atheism? Atheism oh, doesn't can, actually... Oh, oh uh, hold on, hold atheism on. says it... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, atheism doesn't say anything about morals. Let's get that clear right now. It doesn't. Okay? Atheism is, is the answer to a question, do I believe in God? That's it. No, no, it's does God exist? Do I believe in God? No, no, no. That's agnosticism. Does do I do I think a God exists? Do I believe in a God? Nope. That's, you're, you're making a statement about yourself. I'm asking that objective reality. Does God exist? I don't care about your feelings. I want to know what you think is true. Do you believe Again, God exists? Again, that's agnosticism. agnosticism. Do I know if a God exists? I, I don't know if a God exists. Um, and that's it. But most atheists, I mean, it's impossible to be a pure atheist. I'm, I'm saying I'm using this in a colloquial. No, it's not. It's not impossible. I don't believe in any gods. There. I'm an atheist. No, no, an atheist, it make, it's atheism. It is a negation of theism, and it's a positive statement in the negation of God. In order to say there's no God, you would need to know everything. There is what is the question that's, that's being answered, answered with atheism? Uh, it's simply saying that there is no God. And you're living no, as if there is no God. No, it's do you believe in any God? No, ah. Theism is yeah, no without, God. Without God, yes. Yeah. So if you don't believe in God, how do you justify the sanctity of existence? By my own uh, subjective morality. Yeah, but I'm not asking you do it because you just do it. That's what you're, you're giving me a just well, story. That's I'm saying what reason do you have? I don't care what, what you want to hear, you know. You don't want you don't. I want you to be reasonable, but you don't care about being reasonable. I am being reasonable. My answer doesn't have to appease you your sensibilities. You just said you just said I value existence because that's what I do. Yeah, I don't have to. Yes, it well, is fine. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. But I, I can't make you be reasonable. <laughs> but I'm trying to get you to try to be reasonable. Being an atheist doesn't mean you accept a sense of morality or anything like that. It's just the answer to a question. Do you believe no. in God? No. But if you don't believe in God, there are certain corollaries that uh, are necessarily entailed in the way that you view the world. Do you agree with that? For example, extent, atheism, atheism believes that life is meaningless. By again, definition. again, you're adding things onto atheism that are not true. Atheism does not believe anything in that regard. Okay, if there Atheism is, no is God, the answer to a question, a do you believe in any God? Uh, say it again. Atheism, like I said before, is just the answer to the question, do you believe in God? That's it. Now, whether or not you believe there is purpose for anything, that's up to you. Okay, where does that purpose come from then? It can come from you, your environment, your family. Okay, where did you get it from? Where did I get it from? Uh -huh. How did it instantiate? My... How does intention instantiate unintentionally? Say that again. How does intention instantiate, like like become come into being? How does instantiate come into being unintentionally? If the universe is unintentional. How does it intend intention into being? You agree that we are intending to have this conversation, right? Yeah. I click okay, so the in, button and so, join this conversation. Yes. So the so the universe is intentional at some level, right? No, the universe doesn't give a shit. Okay, you're not a part of the universe? I am a part of the universe, but the universe doesn't have a plan. Do you, do you care? About what? Anything. You just said you do. Yeah, I care about a lot of things. Okay, so the universe is intentional at some level. You, you ask me. The universe. I care, but the universe doesn't. Are you part of the universe? <laughs> yes, I am a part of the universe. <laughs> okay, but so the universe, the universe uh, is intentional. How, how could that be so difficult? It just cracks me up. You guys in a million me. years, it will not matter that I existed. But it, it matters the universe to you will right not now. care. Yeah, it matters you to are me. The universe. Are you not part of the universe? I am not the universe. 
I'm a part of the universe, sure, but I'm not <laughs> okay, the universe. You are thinking, I'm not saying you're the totality of the universe. I'm saying, are well, that's what you just said. Are, are you said you said, are you the universe? You want to go back? I mean, do we have 10 second? You know, do we have that? Can we rewind? I am Chuck, I'm saying, are you intentional? Are you a part of the universe? If you are intentional, you are part of the universe, then the universe is intentional at some level. Like, say that again. I had to plug in my uh, headset if, again. If, if you are intentional and if you are a part of the universe, then the universe at some level is intentional. Oops, he left. What happened? Shucks. Hopefully, he'll come back here in a second. <laughs> this cracks me up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Lucifer Almighty, you would never come online and actually show your face, would you? Just snipe and run all the time. That's what you do. Oh, there he is. I hit a I button. I lost you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> okay, so if you are uh, intentional and if you are a, a part of the universe, then the universe at some level is intentional. You can't get around it, my friend. My parents intended to have me, yes. Yeah, where so that did was intentional. come from? If the universe is unintentional, their desire to have a baby. Where, and, the, and their parents. Just keep go, go back as far as you want. Go back, go back, go back, go back. You're not answering the question. I am answering the question. Your question doesn't make sense. Why? You're asking, all right, you said, am I part of the, am I the universe? I'm not the universe. Uh, are you a part of the universe? First, do, you said. You change it to, am I part of the universe? And then, am I the universe? I never said you were so the I, ultimate reality. In fact, we just demonstrated that you're You not. said, am I the universe? Are you a part of the universe? Are you... The, is the universe intentional? Yes, it is. Because you are intending to say that. And you're a part of the universe. I'm not saying every every part portion of the universe is intentional. I'm saying... Well, that's what that question. That's it, what that question in, entails. Is the universe intentional? Yes. Does the universe have the quality of intentionality? Yes, it does. How? Because you just intended to say that. Because I intended to answer a question. Yes. The universe Inten is intentional. Intentionality cannot instantiate unintentionally. It's a violation of the law of identity. So the universe Again, is a thinking. At the beginning of our conversation, I asked for the law of identity, and you granted it. Now you're saying unintentionality is intentional. Well, you're not. Def you didn't define the universe. You're just. We're just going on. Now. I defined it as you. What a part of the universe. Oh, I, I am not the universe. I am not the universe. You are a part of the universe. That I'm doesn't make saying. me the universe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Being a part of it doesn't make me the whole thing. I didn't say that. Oh my gosh. You're just trying to wiggle out, my friend. No, man. You You're trying to include the def you're trying to include it a, a part of something and say it's the whole when it's not. No, I'm not I didn't, no, I didn't say that. It's not the whole part of anything like that. Um anyway, listen, Chuck, I need I've got a really busy rest of my afternoon. I got a ton of work I gotta get done before I leave tonight. Um and um, I mean, I, you've been very kind and a very good interlocutor and actually been very honest. Sometimes there's two types of people. You have those, you have a nice conversation with them. You have other people, they don't, they start talking over you and yelling. And, and I mean, I know you've had up the flat earthers a lot. <laughs> and those conversations aren't so nice. But if you can actually have, you know, a thoughtful conversation, it's very enjoyable. Flat earthers are the same as pre-suppers. It's a whole lot of, nuh -uh. That's what you get. I want to be careful because I have some very dear friends that are presuppositionalists, but I, I have a very low opinion. I have a family member who's a presuppositionalist, and all he oh, right. answers to people with is "nah." -uh. So yeah. <laughs> or how do you know? But, how do you know? Because my brain works. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chuck. Well, I'm going to let you go, and uh, hopefully, had some thoughtful uh, exchange here. We can think about. And uh, you've been very kind, and uh, I'm grateful that you uh, indulged me with uh, your time today. So hopefully sure, why don't we, we get together. Why don't we do this again and dig into morality sometime? Because that's a much more interesting conversation, I think. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. All right. We'll do it again then. Okay. All right, man. All right. Yeah, like I said, I'll I'm good Wednesdays, uh, Thursdays too. So. Okay. All right.
All right, Chuck. But, well, it was nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. All right. See you. All right. See you.